Hi, this is Cheryl for Cut at Home. Today I want to show you one of my favorite uses for the Tim Holtz Adirondack alcohol inks, and that's in making plaid backgrounds that you can stamp on. Sometimes you can stamp on them directly where you have lighter colors involved and where you're using a little bit darker color. Sometimes you need to bleach out the background image a little bit in order to accommodate that stamp and be able to see the full detail. Um, as you know, Tim's stamps are just so beautifully detailed and you don't want to lose any of that. So to make the plaid background, I'm starting out with glossy paper. This is um, made by Ranger. It's specific for this purpose. You could use photo papers, but for example, the bleaching technique doesn't work on the photo paper, only on this gloss paper. I don't know what the magic is but it's clearly there. I didn't believe it at first either, and I tried to use my gloss paper. It doesn't work right. Um, the essential tool is a blending tool, also by Tim Holtz. This is the same one you use with the foam pads. This time you're using the felt pads for it. This is the size, of course, size to fit exactly on that blender tool. Some of you even use the felt for blending and that's perfectly fine. That's a raging debate, felt versus foam. But here we're clearly using the felt. Um, I don't need this full felt pad to do the technique I'm doing today. So I'm being rather cheap. I've cut my felt pad in half and I've just placed it sideways here on um, the Velcro piece. I had to think for a minute about that word. And so I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to add drops of the alcohol ink all in a row across here. You might be able to see just slightly off camera. I've got my bottles lined up here in the order that I want to use them. It's okay to leave them uncapped for a few minutes while you work with this technique. Um, I'm going to try and um, just add a few drops side by side, keeping them relatively even. If one is bigger than another, it's just going to be a wider stripe and that's okay. It's what do you want to see um, in your design. There's no right or wrong with the plaids. Um, I'm using slate today instead of black, so I hope for a little bit lighter effect. Otherwise, I've got red pepper and meadow and bottle and cranberry. Now I'm pretty much ready to go with my um, plaid. The only thing I like to do here is add a line of the plain blender solution top and bottom of that line of ink that will help it to move easier and so I'm just gonna turn this again I've got the line of dot or yeah the dots of the alcohol ink going this way so I'm gonna turn my tool this way as I run it sideways across the paper and I'm just gonna pull it along I don't need to go too slowly for this but likewise I don't want to go too fast because I want that ink to transfer and I want to get a good result. Um, I'm terrible, especially on camera, driving straight, so pardon the crazy lines here. I'm gonna turn and go the other direction to complete the plaid. You could stop and re-ink if you wanted more vibrant colors, but I just keep going. And so there's my first pass with the plaid paper using those five colors. Now you'll notice it's a little lighter and more washed out on this pass, and that's okay. It's just a little different. I'm gonna show you the second pass through. I'm gonna add another sheet of cardstock, and I'm gonna put more ink on my pad, but I'm not gonna add any more blending solution, and you'll see that that's going to allow those colors to come out much more vibrant. Now it may be harder for you to see, I'm trying to make sure I get drops out. Sometimes the bottle's inverted and it appears you're getting drops, but they're really not coming out. So you have to um, learn to watch for that, especially on the second inking. It's a little harder to see than when you're working on a clean pad. So I'm re-inked and ready to go now. Again, I'm gonna flip my tool this way and it doesn't matter which side of stripes you work on first, whether you work this way or the other way. But already you can see my color is coming out more vibrant. My lines are still pretty crooked because that's what I do. We all have our issues. But I'm gonna turn and go the other way 
and it's just a really really cool pattern um, that emerges again they're all somewhat different um, this is a little bit darker and so probably in order to stamp an image on this I would need to do some bleaching from the center um, but it's the alcohol inks so it's pretty much dry at this point in time my fingers are dirty so it's hard to see if anything's rubbing off or not but really it's not rubbing off um, it's dry at this point so if I wanted to bleach the center for example in order to put this stamp in I might turn it this way first of all so that I can see the area that I'm working in because I think this guy is going to go this direction on that piece of plaid. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put um, six to eight drops of the plain blender solution in the center. It's going to tend to run out in a circular pattern and I'm going to grab a piece of the felt and just fold it over and sort of help it go in the sort of oval shape that I want it to be in. You'll notice that right away you're not seeing too much bleaching action. It takes a minute for this to happen and to take effect, but it does. And so in the meantime, you can keep moving the blending solution around and you can see the bleached pattern starting to form here. Again, with the slate ink as opposed to using pure black, arguably you may not even have to bleach it out, but I want to show you the bleaching technique. So we're going to go ahead and bleach. Now it's not the full design I need for Santa, but it's enough to get the detail in there, and that's good enough. We don't necessarily have to have a full bleached pattern. Um, to stamp, I'm using the Ranger Archival ink. That is what will work best, um, if at all, on glossy paper. Glossy paper needs a little special treatment. Um, so I'm gonna ink up my stamp. Wet ink on glossy paper wants to slide so you want to be careful about how you set your stamp down and you want to press it down a little bit again being careful to hold it into place and then rather than pushing on it or anything else just leave it sit there for a minute let the powers of gravity take hold and that ink will transfer from the stamp onto the paper at this point you can just lift it straight up and you have a good image of Santa in that paper Again, um, I sort of challenge you to come to the Cut at Home blog and see how I finish him into a cute card. There are some other ones that I made earlier. This is a plaid that incorporates black as opposed to slate. So clearly I did have to bleach it out in order to show the beautiful detail of this wreath. Um, this is a Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stamp. Don't you love the level of detail that's there on the stamp? absolutely gorgeous but that wouldn't show without bleaching this is a little lighter pla plaid using reds and greens and a white mixative so i was able to just stamp santa directly on with no problem this is kind of an oops with a stamp when i put this one down i wasn't being careful and the stamp slid to the side a little bit so you can see where i have a little bit of a messed up image Again, this is another plaid where it wasn't necessary to bleach out. How cool is it with that image? Again, there's a wonderful card in there to be had. And then finally, I love this Santa, and I love to see him on the plaids. Um, again, with the black in the background, you really need to bleach this out in order for Santa to show well. So lots and lots of opportunities. Um, you don't just have to use... Christmas colors though, here's a false set of colors, and look at how cool that scarecrow looks. So you have to have a lot of fun playing with your um, Adirondack alcohol inks, doing lots of different stamped images, or lots of different plaids, and that sort of thing. There's so many possibilities out there. Um, stay tuned for some further videos from me for other ways of using your alcohol inks. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye.